Okay, I promise this isn't reused footage from part four. This is the second test fill from uh, the, for the Predator Bay Aquarium. As you remember, the first one had a little bit of a problem, so we had to uh, fix a leak. Uh, well, let me show you. So before we before we got back to refilling, we had to fix a leak on the long back panel. It was down in the middle there. Um, I decided to go ahead and just pop the whole panel out and redid it and put it back. Uh, it might not have had it been done that way, but I went ahead and uh, just went ahead and made that call. Peace of mind, right? Big aquarium, lots of water. Not something you wanna take any chances with. So at any rate, it is all the way back in and it has a giant bead of silicone and the silicone's been filled in uh, where it had the problem before. Uh, as you can see, we got all the plumbing back in and the drains, and um, we have completed the return plumbing. So over here, all of our return plumbing, right here, our two returns coming down and into our, our pump is all complete. We have the union valve there and we're all set. So if this fill test goes as expected, and uh, we have a few days of holding water without any problems, we can go ahead and kick it on all the way and start running the water down the drains <laughs> through our maze of uh, filter runways and then back up to our return. And at that point, you know, once that's tested out, it's gonna be time for uh, aquascaping. And well, turning the water into salt water and all that good stuff, but that is, uh, that means we are extremely close once we get to that point so it's gonna take a while but uh hopefully we got this thing fixed and licked and uh we'll get it filled all the way up all right all right finally water test part two is complete we spent six days holding uh water uh just below the bulkheads or actually about halfway at the bulkhead but not draining uh and i went ahead and tested out the sump as well as the top as the aquarium at the same time every day just going around checking <laughs> any water all's good come around to the side everything's still good plumbing all the return plumbing everything's good the panel that we had to pop out all's all's well that ends well and then uh-oh yep that's a fan <laughs> why was the fan out there was a leak. So I was coming around and I looked down and there was water right down here sitting on top of the wood. And I was like, wait a minute. And then I saw water here and I was like, that can't leak, that's impossible. That's, that's so overbuilt. And then wait a minute, yep, bulkhead. <laughs> when I first saw the water down there, I was like, oh no. There's some guys, you know, roasting me in the comments. They're gonna have a field day with this. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Tippin' Turtle. And uh, so I was, oh my God, this is horrible. And then I, when I saw the bulkhead, I was like, oh sweet, it's just a bulkhead. Bulkheads are easy. So uh, went ahead and loosened both the bulkheads, uh, put silicone in there and then cranked them tight. So two things I do differently on a plywood build that I would never do with bulkheads on a glass build is that a bulkhead on glass seals really well. But a bulkhead on, uh, two layers of fiberglass and four layers of pond coat. It's just not that smooth of a surface uh, yeah, like glass. So you gotta crank it down tighter and you gotta end up just putting some silicone around there to, you know, just to over, well, to, to really get it to seal and be sure about it. So that is the case. And as you can see, not only is it all sealed up, but it's running. We've been running the the whole uh, filtration system for 24 hours. So we get down underneath here and you can see we are draining water into the first chamber. We're going down and then all the way crossing over into the second chamber. We checked out all the plumbing, no leaks anywhere. Uh, no leaks in the return, no leaks in the drain and uh, the so and so the water level for the sump is controlled by 
the return, so how fast we're draining out water uh, into the sump. And as you can see, the first two chambers, they were running two and a half to three inches below the crest. And then you can see on the final chamber, this is where our extra overflow is. And we have a good a solid, probably five inches there, twice as much because once we're running the tank, we have to account for if the power goes out, the pump goes off, we have to be able to handle an inch, about an inch and a quarter to get the water level below the drains. So to do that with a little bit of a math, figuring out uh, the one and a quarter's worth of this dimension of the tank into the bottom, which isn't a complete, you know, completely across like the uh, like the tank. It's three chambers with gaps in between. Calculated that to be able to drain one and a quarter inches worth of water from the top, I needed at least two and a half in the bottom, and that takes it right up to the hairy edge. So I did test it, and right now uh, it it is it does work. It is to the hairy edge. I have since adjusted that to give myself about a half an inch, but in the meantime, one thing that I overlooked was our returns are lower down. So what happens is with the pump off, we start to back siphon through the returns and then that blows our model underneath because they're a little bit lower than the drains over on the other side. So what we have to do and what I've already done is ordered a couple more of the lock line knuckles. So we'll just raise those guys up and uh, we'll get them uh, just above the water. Well, we'll get them at the same height with the water line as the drains are, or actually slight, correction, correction, slightly higher so that we don't uh, back siphon anything through the returns, just through the drains. And that way we'll have it covered, uh, you know, whenever the power goes out, which, you know, it happens from time to time and we don't want to spill water on the floor. So uh, there we go. All right. Well, it's been running for 24 hours with the uh, entire system running. Um, the uh, My lock line should be here tomorrow. Uh, I'll go ahead and get those installed. And I feel pretty comfortable to go ahead and uh, start the next step. So that means aquascaping. <laughs> so the way it's gonna go down is uh, because this tank is uh, three times bigger than the tank the sharks and rays are coming from, uh, I needed more aquas uh, aquascaping materials, which I have. Uh, I went ahead and got uh, a few hundred pounds of uh, base rock for bulk reef supply. And uh, I'm gonna build up, I'm gonna get all this sand in there. I'm gonna get the base rock for the rock work. And then uh, the top coat of that rock is actually gonna be the rock that's coming from the aquarium they're in. And that won't go in until this tank is uh, had all the salt added and the salinity and the temperature and everything is just right because we want to preserve the bacteria that's on the rock in the tank they're in because that's a major factor for jump starting this filtration system so we're going to have a ton of sand in here uh, that is just virgin sand no bacteria on it. it takes time for that to colonize and we also have all of this media in the sump both the uh, ceramic bars and even the metallo mat will be covered in bacteria um, so we need to make sure we don't kill off the bacteria when we move over the rock from the 600 gallon. So we'll get the base all set and we'll get the tank salt water. And then, only then will we move over that rock. And at the same time we move over that rock, we have to move over the fish because we need to keep that supply of ammonia coming out of the fish that feeds the bacteria living on the rock. So a little bit of a delicate dance, but to help speed it along and uh, the same way I did like the 150, I will use the same product, the Fritzide 9, and I will be dosing the bacteria weekly um, just to sort of offset what we don't have in the, uh, in the sand bed and in the filter bed. Oh, and then lastly, um, before adding the live rock and the fish, I need to get the protein skimmer set up. So uh, the fan won't be needed anymore, knock on tank, and uh, in its place, I will be building a, uh, uh, a little uh, table for the protein skimmer to sit on so I can put a bucket underneath for the overflow. And uh, I need to get the Super Reef Octopus set up and running. So uh, those are the next steps, but uh, we are close. We are really close. 
Predator Bay will have sharks in it very soon. Oh, and I almost forgot more bracing on the top. Uh, I need to have covers for the top, covers for all of the sump, which I will pick up and start cutting them up to get them the right sizes. And I have a lighting system upstairs. So uh, exciting stuff for that. But uh, we'll debut that uh, once we have uh, some, some cool fish to light up in here. All right, back to work. All right, so we have the skimmer in place. Uh, it is not fully plumbed in yet, but you kind of get the, the rough idea of where it's gonna go. And we repurposed some more of those crates. And I gotta tell you, I don't know who makes these crates, but uh, they're not easy to deconstruct. I mean, they use nails, they use three different types of screws, Phillips head, two different star drives, they use staples. I mean, it's, it's crazy, but with two by fours costing seven and a half bucks, uh, it's actually worth the time. And we got a little drain bucket down here for the protein skimmer. So, uh, like I said, not fully plumbed in, but uh, you know what? You know what I think you guys might be more interested in than me and what I'm gonna do with this protein skimmer? How about the fact that the aquarium is aquascaped. We have thousands of pounds of sand. We have all the base rock in there. We have salt water. Uh, we're working on a completed top. We are getting really close. Uh, so let me bring you back. It's been running with salt water that is matched up in terms of salinity and, and uh, water chemistry with the tank they're coming from. Running through the filtration system. Uh, it has been going now for oof, uh, five, five days. So running as a full salt water tank. Uh, you can see that we have the beginnings of the uh, aquascape. Uh, if you remember, all the, the base rock on the bottom is gonna be all topped off with all the live rock that's coming from the tank that the fish are in right now. So this is uh, just the base work, just base rock to build, up, build upon. This is uh, not uh, you know the, the finished gate by any means, but it does give you a little bit of an idea of you know kind of the overall flow of the tank you'll have you know all around the perimeter when you get near the glass there at a minimum it doesn't look like it when you look at the glass but at a minimum there's a foot and a half between that rock and the glass and let me take you up top and show you because it is crazy when you're looking through the front there you're like nah, I don't know that looks like six inches in or something like that but then <clears throat> if you come up to the top and you look down you can see that I mean that that like might be two feet back. I mean, there's a lot of room there. You know, it's 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 crazy how glass does that glass and water. But <clears throat> so at any rate, uh, none of the rock is close to the glass at all. You're going to have an area here which will be you know rock work, got open space there. We're going to have I'm actually going to adjust that a little bit and create more of a open pathway through there. And then we'll build up this rock work here a little higher, a little lower over here. We have a big open spot through the middle, and then this will be kind of higher, sloping lower. Uh, again, and then we'll bring around to the side, you know, and the sharks can enjoy all those pathways through 13 foot swim all the way down. Well, 13 and a half foot swim all the way down the aquarium and uh, then back over to the, I don't know if it's the back side or the front side, but it's the, uh, the biggest panel on the side or uh, of any sides. And again, it, that looks like it's right there, but that is a foot and a half back at least. Like I said, when I, I took, uh, when I drained the water uh, to put the sand and everything in, so I was in the tank arranging this with no water uh, to make sure I got the spacing just right. And, and it is, uh, you know, it is all spaced away from glass because these are big fish, they're gonna get bigger. So we need to account, the aquascape needs to account for their ultimate size. But at any rate, um, yeah, it is ready. It, I basically am just gonna work on uh, the protein skimmer and a few other uh, odds and ends with the top. I have some more cross beams outside. I'm actually gonna have three more, and not so much that I need them to hold the tank front to back, it's that I'm gonna use them to put in little connectors that these acrylic panels will sit on because the lights are gonna be up on here. So I need them to be stronger than they are. They're, they're fine right now if the lights were suspended, but since the lights are gonna be sitting on top of there, they need to be stronger. Um, so they're outside drying right now, but I'll be putting those in and then putting the rest of the panels. And then down in the, the sump, I'm covering each one of these chambers with these same acrylic panels, you know, to keep the humidity down. It's a huge tank, a lot of water. 
Uh, I can't have all that humidity down here, plus I got a lot of other tanks, so be a nightmare, but uh, that won't be a problem. It'll all be covered like the other tanks, uh, so be good to go. Um, one last thing, I uh, brought one of the returns right up there near the surface, and I had to get rid of my random flow nozzle and use the other nozzle, uh, and then I'm waiting for one more piece over there, and I'll bring the other one up higher and switch out the random flow nozzle for that one there so that I don't get any back siphoning uh, in the event of a power outage. But as you can see, this is a running saltwater tank right now. So the next steps, the next steps are to bring over the live rock and the fish. So that's gonna be all done at one time. So part six, the next episode for Predator Bay, it's the big one, it's go time, it's going live, part six fish will be in the tank. We'll be feeding sharks in Predator Bay. We'll be feeding rays in Predator Bay. And I might just have a couple of surprises uh, for some other things that are gonna happen in that episode. So if you watched any of these other ones, you definitely gotta watch part six, because this is where it all comes together. Predator Bay is going live.